I want to begin this morning with a poem by the great American poet Emily Dickinson. It's called, The Lightning is a Yellow Fork. The lightning is a yellow fork from tables in the sky by inadvertent fingers dropped the awful cutlery. I think that was supposed to rhyme of mansion never quite disclosed and never quite concealed, the apparatus in the dark to ignorance revealed. Dickinson depicts the lightning that falls from the yellow sky as falling from God's table by accident, a fork that accidentally slipped through God's fingers. And admittedly for the poet it can seem also for us, that very much that is the way that life is like. Sometimes for us, God's ways do in fact seem mysterious. And so what better explanation could there be than the poem of Emily Dickinson that the lightning is a yellow fork that has accidentally dropped from God's banquet table in the sky. And yet as we read Parashat Noah in this week's Torah portion, a Torah portion and a parasha that allows us to believe that a flood came to destroy humanity, not because it came accidentally from the sky, but because God intentionally was upset with the way human beings were behaving, it challenges Emily Dickinson's understanding of the world. Under the theology of Emily Dickinson, you might say that the flood that happened in the Bible was a glass of milk spilling from God's table. Yet Parashat Noach reminds us that as Jews, we are in the business of meaning making. And the world is a very intentional place. Things, as my Bubby would have said, happen for a reason. God does not accidentally spill a glass of milk from the table, but as the Torah portion tells us, ki God's reaction to the great evil of the world is to send a flood. Similarly, as I mentioned earlier, when we come to the Tower of Babel story, we read that it's not a moment where God just decides to punish the people, but as our rabbis tell us, it is a moment of great rebellion against God. That's why the people are scattered. It's not an accident. It's not haphazard. It's the consequences of rebellion. God in the Torah is not the God of Emily Dickinson. They might both agree that the lightning is a yellow fork. But for the Torah, the lightning and the yellow fork don't fall by accident. They fall for a reason. Immorality has consequences. Nothing happens in our world, according to our Torah portion, without God's intention, or without at least challenging us to find a reason why that may have taken place. So what are we supposed to make of the coronavirus? Is all of this in our day also happening for a reason? A few months ago on the uh, NPR news quiz show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, there was a very, very funny comedy sketch, and I still remember it, in which the host played the voice of the coronavirus reacting to our sorrow. Oh, said the coronavirus, I am so sorry, folks. This must have been a misunderstanding. After all, he said, I notice you like to spend so much time on your cell phones and your computers indoors. I also notice that you like to spend so much money on fix-up shows to fix up doing your homes because it seems like you never really want to leave them. This must have been just a misunderstanding, said the coronavirus. I thought, after all, this is what you wanted me to do. There's no question that the coronavirus is not a laughing matter. Many innocent people have died and countless others suffer. And yet as we look through it through the lens of our Torah portion and we struggle to make meaning of how our world has been changed over the past several months, I can't help but think that NPR nailed it when it comes to poetic justice. According to Reader's Digest, 
11,000 people get injured a year because they walk while talking and looking at their cell phones at the same time on the street. Some of us, by the way, may be guilty of being those injuries ourselves. And yeah, as Rabbi Lewis famously drashed, Matovo Halacha Yaakov, sometimes our homes have become so wonderful that we look for any excuse not to leave them. Our children don't go out to play. Grown men sit in front of the computer and play Fortnite all day. Social media addiction is pervasive. And as my son tells me at seven years old, YouTube is no longer a hobby. It's a career ambition. And so what might we learn from the pandemic? I hate to say it, but we can't escape the fact that this pandemic has been a kind of poetic justice that our Torah would have understood very, very well. Our present situation, our social media overload almost reminds me of a moment in the Torah where God, responding to the Israelites' need for meat, gives them as much meat as they want. And so they eat and eat and eat in the deserts until we're told that meat came out of their eyeballs that they ate so much. To paraphrase the artist Jamiroquai, we are living in a virtual insanity. We are zoomed out. We are eating technology until it comes out of our eyeballs. But like the times of the flood, our parasha challenges us to take a step back. Our parasha challenges us to look back and say, you know, there may be meaning for us in all of this when this is over. We needed an experience just like this to know that the lifestyle of Jane and George Jetson was not ideal. It's not all cracked up. It's all cracked up to be. Digital connection is not connecting us in the way that we wanted. We miss seeing each other. It is no substitute for a bagel and for a kiddush in shul. In a time of a pandemic, it could be easy for us to look at this situation and say, you know, I read it like Emily Dickinson. The lightning is a yellow fork. God is an apparatus in the dark to ignorance revealed. This is all so mysterious, we don't know why this might have happened. Only on a week in our Torah portion, where we read about a very intentional flood that came for a reason, we have to wonder what's going on in the world right now and what might it say about all of us? Is the coronavirus really just a yellow fork that fell from God's inadvertent fingers slipping at a banquet table in the sky? Or is this not a tragedy of biblical proportions that can teach us something? There are times perhaps in life, not only the coronavirus, when we can all feel like the lightning is a yellow fork dropped from fingers in the sky. But the challenge as a Jew, as we read Parashat Noach, is to make meaning from tragedy. The challenge of a Jew is not to think about the world as always being arbitrary, but to see how we might use these moments to think about our own lives and to live better. Let's not any of us here this morning or at home fail to seize the moments. Let us see the yellow fork that has fallen from heaven as an opportunity for us to do better. This is, after all, once again, an opportunity to build a better world after the flood. Amen.